Hello, everybody. My name's Carl Thomas. I am a member of the ITU Hall of Fame, and I was instrumental in the earliest years of the foundation of the ITU, and there are a couple of stories that I'd like to share with you, um, starting with the vision of the Olympic Games. So I've been, uh, since I was age 10, I sort of been fascinated with the Olympics. I tried to make the U.S. Olympic team uh, in swimming two times and in water polo a third time. Uh, none of that actually worked out. So my fourth attempt at being a part of the Olympic Games was in 1980. NBC Sports, the broadcaster, selected me to be the color commentator for the men's water polo competition. Uh, never got there. Uh, the U.S. boycotted the 1980 Olympic Games in Moscow due to the uh, Russian invasion of Afghanistan. But there were a couple like sort of key moments leading up to 1980 that at least for me sort of set in motion this uh, the beginnings of what will become the ITU. So in 1978, the U.S. Uh, Senate, uh, under the auspices of Senator Ted Stevens, drafted some legislation that was called the Amateur Sports Act. And essentially what the Amateur Sports Act was about was to sort of do away with the historical AAU configuration and put in place uh, rules and regulations and actually into law the ability for sport to govern itself. Uh, that means national governing bodies, whether it was USA Swimming or US Water Polo, um, would become their own discrete and unique entities. They would be given not-for-profit status under the IRS regulations 501c3, and they could then manage themselves as appropriate as they saw appropriate and not have to adhere to broader guidelines that may or may not work for an individual sport. I was invited to be one of four athletes to go to Washington, D.C. and testify before Senator Stevens' committee on our experiences within the Olympic movement as U.S. athletes, what had worked, what hadn't worked, and whether or not we thought the changes that were being considered made sense. All four athletes um, agreed that changes, serious ones, needed to be made, and that the notion of individual national governing bodies sort of guiding their own direction and sort of taking control of their own uh, competitions, their own athlete criteria, their own qualification criteria, all made perfect sense. So one year prior to, to being selected by the Stevens Committee, I joined Speedo Swimwear. I was an aquatic athlete and it was a perfect fit for me. Um, and over the next three years, uh, worked for Speedo, um, and then in 1980 became the marketing vice president for Speedo. And it was at that point, really, that this sport triathlon sort of came into my consciousness. I'd read the article that Barry McDermott wrote in Sports Illustrated in 1979 about the Ironman. The Ironman is this competition that back then was taking athletes 11, 12, 13, some 15, 18 hours to complete. Uh, still is in Kona, Hawaii, um, but that just was too long for what I would call a weekend warrior format or, or probably better stated, a regular athlete format. So I began to think about and envision a triathlon format that was much shorter than the Ironman, but was mass participation based like marathon running was that would give athletes a chance to test their a stamina, their endurance, their skill set in swimming, cycling, and running a week in and week out. So in 1981, I met with uh, a few folks. One, Scott Tinley. He was one of what they call the big four. Uh, he was I I an elite professional triathlete for the next 12 to 15 years. And he was my, sort of my confidant as the athlete who would participate in this to establish and arrive at a, a reasonable format. In 1981, we laid the foundation for what would become the US Triathlon Series. We arrived at the format, we arrived at locations, and we launched the inaugural US Triathlon Series in five cities in 1982, starting in San Diego, then Los Angeles, then, then San Francisco, then Portland, Oregon, then Seattle, Washington. And over the course of that year and the next, we continued to revise the formats. And by the end of 1983, we uh, managed across the country 17 triathlons in the 
uh, USTS format, which at the time was 15, let me see, it was 2K swim, 35K bike, a 15K run. And we adjusted those distances in, 82, in 83 and again in 1984. And we arrived at what is now the Olympic distance in 1984. Uh, a 1500 meter swim, 40K bike, 10K run. The whole year of 1984 was really a watershed year for the sport of triathlon, and I will get into the specifics of that in just a second. So in the, in the two years, 82 and 83, uh, leading up to 1984, what became really obvious was that there were thousands of triathletes, not only in this country, but around the world, that were uh, not only interested, but committed to getting in shape, training and doing a triathlon that was much more accessible than what the Ironman format was. So as we came up to the end of 83, we did a lot of surveys and Q&A as marketing folks are wont to do. Uh, and what we found out was there still needed to be some tweaking to the format uh, in terms of balance. At that point, we had uh, at, at my initiative, we had uh, created the first national governing body for triathlon here in the United States. That formative group has become what is now USA Triathlon, the official national governing body in the US. Um, and we, we looked at the broader template of how to legitimize triathlon around the world in this particular format. So you'll note I've always talked in kilometers. Kilometers is the international language, not yards and miles. So when we arrived at the 1500 meter swim, 40K bike, 10K run format, those three distances in each of the disciplines, swimming, cycling, and running, were really international standard distances globally. So we tagged the format, the international standard distance, and that debuted in 1984. So as we came up on the spring of 1984, we had 12 cities um, under contract. And the third year of the series uh, debuted, the 1500 meter swim, 40K bike, 10K run format. Additionally, we also debuted what we call wave starts, where we broke the professional men, the professional women into separate and distinct waves for start times. And then we did the same thing with the age groupers. So the 20 to 24 men, would go and then the 20 to 24 women would go. So wave starts really improved and increased the safety and management of the sport of triathlon. Additionally, in the third element was we put neon colored caps, different colors on each wave start. That did several really cool things. One, it let the race organizers and race management clearly understand where we were in the sequencing of the start waves and then being able to track those athletes throughout the swim. The most dangerous part of triathlon is the open water swimming. Secondly, it allowed the press and the media a really strong visual cue to follow these athletes as they went into the water and then swam their way around the 1500 meter course. And the third thing we did was we brightly numbered each athlete corresponding with their race number so we could see them from behind and in front. Again, streamline management, effectiveness, timing, uh, transition timing, all of the key elements that it takes to actually produce an event. And over the course of 1984, it became very clear that this format was the right one. It took us three years to get there, but we got there. And, and as we were rolling uh, across the country in 1984, I began working in earnest on the creation of the predecessor to the International Triathlon, Triathlon Union called the ITU. Um, my, my group was FIT, Federation International Triathlon. I started working on that in late 83 and into 84. I had some really good help along the way. Bob Helmick, who was then the president of the USOC, former president of the FINA, the International Governing Body for Swimming, was also an IOC member and an attorney. So he was intimately familiar with not only the mechanics, but the language, the structure, and 
in the end, most importantly, the political environment that we would be facing in launching an international federation. In 1984, he introduced me to uh, the organization headquartered in Monaco, Monte Carlo, called GAIFS, G-A-I-S-F, General Association of International Sport Federations. And I made several calls over there and struck up a relationship and a conversation with the general secretary, Luke Nigley. Um, he was coming to the Los Angeles Olympic Games, invited me to meet him there, which I did. And he heard the full story of triathlon. I can say that he actually loved it because he was a sportsman himself. And he then introduced me to the IAAF executive group, as well as the UCI executive group. IAAF is the International Federation for Track, Field, and Running. And the UCI is the Union of International Cyclists. They're, they oversee all the cycling competition in the Olympic Games, as well as, for example, a Tour de France. So having met those folks in, in August of 1984, and Nigley heard the story the whole way. He then invited me to the Gaves Congress, which was scheduled for later that year, October, in Monte Carlo, and, and I immediately said yes. And Bob Helmick and Luke Nigley then introduced me to the president of Gaves, Tommy Keller, who was a rower and had been and was at the time the president of the International Rowing Union. So this was now all coming together in 1984 as we headed toward October, we had uh, the General Association of International Sport Federations as an audience. We, we had athletes by the thousands in the U.S., and we were expanding that footprint overseas. We met with folks from Japan. We explained to them what we were doing. Immediately, the Japanese created the Japan Triathlon Federation, the national governing body, to mirror what we had created in the U.S., and they immediately joined FIT. And they immediately took the 1500 meter swim, 40K bike, 10K run format and began planning their own Japan Triathlon Series, sort of mirrored on what we had accomplished here in the US with the US Triathlon Series. So as I headed into Monte Carlo, um, all three of the gentlemen I just mentioned were there and very supportive of what we were doing. So the Gaves Congress format was a three-day Congress, two sessions per day, interspersed with coffee breaks and receptions and opportunities for networking and conversation, that sort of thing. I took full advantage of that as I sort of began meeting and speaking and telling the triathlon story all around our format, all around the creation of the FIT and our Olympic aspirations. Because from day one, the, the creation of the U.S. Triathlon Series and the evolution of the national governing body and the International Federation had a single goal in mind, and that was to become part of the Olympic program. Uh, and this was really the pivotal year, if you will, the watershed year in 1984, which sort of started the ball rolling in, in earnest. So as I was uh, moving about the various sessions and coffee breaks, I was sort of waiting for my opportunity to, to tell the story to the to the whole group. So late of the second day of the Congress in a conversation with Tommy Keller, the president, he shared with me that his intention was to bring me up before the group sometime on the third day of the Congress. The third day of the Congress was truncated. It only had a morning session. So an early morning coffee, first session, mid-morning coffee break, second session, and then they broke uh, the Congress, closed it and, and went off to lunch. So I was very excited by this news. So at the early morning coffee break, um, they really hadn't come to terms with exactly when I would be given the floor to speak. Uh, so we, I went through the first session and in the mid-morning coffee break, uh, each of the three gentlemen, Tommy Keller, Luke Nigley, and Bob Helmick, all of whom were obviously there and in the room, came to me separately and said, you're gonna get your opportunity at the, at the commencement of the last session of the Congress. Uh, so I, again, super excited to get the opportunity to tell the story to really a group of men and women who mattered most in the world of international federations and Olympic politics. So as that mid-morning coffee break concluded and we all assembled back in the Congress hall, uh, Tommy Keller from the dais uh, with his executive officers waited for all the seats to be filled and the room to quiet down. And it was like it was yesterday because it was, it was such an amazing experience. But what he did was he said, I want to introduce a guest to you all. 
Um, I think the story is really interesting and compelling, and I think you will agree. So please, from the back of the hall, I want to introduce to you Monsieur de Triathlon. Literally, that's what he said. He didn't use my name. He didn't use the FIT acronym or moniker or even suggest that I was there to sort of begin the process of introducing to the group a new international sports federation. But in his way, without even saying my name or the international federation, he cemented in that group the sport of triathlon. I then got a chance to go to the front address the Congress for 15 full minutes, walk them through the format, the expansion of the sport globally, how many countries we now had athletes participating in, um, talked about our rules and regulations, took a few questions, but not that many, because people understood exactly what we were trying to do. The early work we did in, in the formatting, the 1500 meter swim, 40K bike, 10K run, resonated with the group. They understood that it, it took a little over uh, two hours to complete for the men, uh, a little longer than that from the women. It was well inside um, the acceptable standards of the Olympic marathon distance. So there weren't all that many questions. There were a few, but at the end of, the, of my 15 minutes, I won't say I got a standing ovation because I didn't, but the applause was healthy. And again, Tommy Keller uh, thanked me and reiterated that the sport of triathlon was new, exciting, compelling, and had a grassroots movement globally with an emerging professional elite class of athletes that was in, in truth, a real legitimate sport with all of the political structure required to take us to the next stage, which is another story.